trees are another important abstraction. The tree abstraction is used to represent hierarchical structures like this one. This is called a Fibonacci tree because at each point we have a Fibonacci number. 5 is made of 2 and 3, 2 is made of 1 and 1, etc. A tree consists of a root value and a sequence of branches. Each branch is a tree. So you see a recursive definition here that a tree contains other trees. The root value in this case is 5. Here's one of the branches. A tree with zero branches is called a leaf. So this branch is a tree, and its branch is a tree, and its branch is a tree, and this tree has no branches. So that's called a leaf. Now the way we'll represent this leaf is as a tree with a root value of zero and no branches. Although in computer science, it's also very common to call the root value at the leaf itself as a leaf. So I might say, oh, the leaves of this tree are 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1. The root values of subtrees within a tree are often called node values or nodes. So you might see that vocabulary used as well. This whole thing is a tree. Its branch is a tree, and the branch of the branch is also a tree. So here's one of the many subtrees within this tree. And the number 2 here, which is the root value of a subtree, somewhere within this whole tree, is called a node. So if we wanted to enumerate all of the nodes, there would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 nodes. Here's an implementation of the tree abstraction. A tree has a root value and a sequence of branches. Each branch is a tree. So if I want to represent this, I'll create it by passing in the root value 3 and then the sequence of branches, where this branch is a tree and this branch is a tree as well, with root values 1 and 2 respectively. The underlying representation I'll use is a list within a list within a list. So here, we're going to construct this using the following functions. The tree function takes a root value and some branches, and it returns a list that contains the root value followed by all of the branches. And so here we see 3 is followed by the tree containing 1, etc. The root of a tree is a function, a selector function, that selects the element at index 0. That's exactly where we put the root when we constructed the tree. And the branches are all of the elements of the tree starting at index 1, so not including the root, which is exactly where we put the branches. So this constructor and these two selectors allow us to build trees. Now, we're actually going to add a little bit more code in order to do error checking to make sure that we're building valid trees. So what we'll do is go through every branch in branches and make sure that it's a tree itself. Each branch is a tree. The other change I've made is to call list on branches so that I can pass in any sequence and I'll make sure that it's a list, which I'll then add to the list containing the root in order to get a list that starts with the root and is followed by all the branches. The whole point of this for statement is not to do anything useful, but just to verify the tree definition. Now, is tree is a recursive function. Is tree takes in a tree, makes sure that it's a list, makes sure that its length is at least 1, because there has to be a root value. If either of those is false, then it will return false. This is not a tree. A tree is only a tree if for every branch, the branch is a tree. So if any branch is not a tree, then we return false. If it has the right structure and every branch is a tree, then we return true. You may not have seen this syntax before. Type is a built-in function that returns what sort of thing tree is bound to. In this case, it's a list. And then you can check and see if that type is the same as the list type or not. Finally, 
we have a function that checks whether something is a leaf. It's a leaf if it doesn't have any branches. OK, let's play around. Here's our definition of a tree, the root, the branches, whether it's a tree or not, and whether something's a leaf. So I can create a tree just by passing in a root value. And by the way, that's a leaf. Now let's say I want to create a larger tree. I create a tree by passing in a root value and then a list of branches. Now that list could be empty, giving me a leaf. Or it could contain other trees. If I put anything in there besides a tree, such as the number 4, I'll get an error. Branches must be trees. So if I wanted to create a root value of 1 and then a branch that was a leaf with 4 in it, I have to call tree on 4. Now I get a light legal structure. And if I want to add more branches, I can. And if I want those branches to have branches, then I just add them in. So this one will now have its own branch, which is a leaf that has 6 in it. Let's call that t. What's the root of t? 1. What are the branches of t? Well, there they are. Most importantly, what's the root of the branch at index 0? Well, that's how I get the 4. So branches is a sequence. I can use element selection in order to pick which branch I want to talk about. And then if I want to know what value is there, in order to use my data abstraction correctly, I call the root function to get the root value. And I can also ask, is that a leaf? Hopefully it's not. No, it's not a leaf because it has its own branch containing 6. Now, we can construct trees manually. That's what we've just done. But we can also construct trees using a function. And a typical way to construct a tree is to write a tree recursive function that creates the tree incrementally. So let's create Fibonacci trees, where the root value will be the nth Fibonacci number. So if n is 0, or n is 1. Then we just have a leaf. We return a tree containing n as the root value. Otherwise, we need to create the left branch and the right branch of the Fibonacci tree. Those involve recursive calls to fib n minus 2 and fib tree n minus 1. Now, how do I get the root value r? I do it by getting the root value of the left and adding that to the root value of the right. Now I can return my Fibonacci tree with r is the nth Fibonacci number. That's the root value. And what are the branches? Well, they're just left and right. So the Fibonacci tree for just 1 contains 1, for 2 contains 1 at the root, which is the Fibonacci number 2. And then the branches are what it's constructed of, 0 and 1. And then if I want to create the tree that I showed you at the beginning, well, then I'd call fib tree on 5, which has as a branch fib tree 3, which has 2 at the root, and also fib tree 4, which has 3 at the root. And we see both of those branches in sequence. And then at the root, we have Fibonacci number number 5, which is 5. And of course, as we've seen before, fib trees can get very large if you pass in a large number. So here's 55 at the root. And in order to construct this, I have branches that have branches that have branches that have branches. And so I see these long sequences of closed brackets. 